Hey guys, today I am going to be starting a new what if called What If Goku Landed in MHA, so let's begin. In age 737, Bardock and Jinae send their son Kakarot to planet Earth, however, this time they send Goku to the Earth of MHA. One day, when Inko was wandering in a field with baby Deku, she sees what she thinks to be a meteor, so runs away. After the crash, she returns to find a baby with a tail crawling around crying. Seeing the tail, she assumes it is a part of the boy's quirk and decides to adopt the boy assuming he was abandoned, naming him Goku. In junior high, the teacher tells the class that he would usually give out a career aptitude test, but he knows that everyone wants to go to the hero course. Hearing this, Bakugo retorts telling the teacher not to lump him in with these extras, we will be lucky to make it as a sidekick to a busted D-lister. With the teacher revealing that Bakugo wants to go to UA and might make it. He then realizes that there are two more people applying Deku and Goku. The class start laughing at Deku believing he has no chance at making it in UA with Bakugo threatening Deku if he applies, telling him he will die in the exam. However Goku stops Bakugo telling him that going to UA is Deku's dream, and that Deku has trained his whole life with him and will make it in as the first quirk less student. After class, Deku and Goku are talking and going home, when Deku is attacked by the sludge villain suffocating him. Before Goku can throw a punch, All Might appears and blows the sludge villain away with a Detroit smash, freeing Deku. When Deku wakes up, Goku and Deku ask All Might for an autograph, finding out he already gave them it. All Might goes to leave, but when he jumps away, Deku grabs onto All Might's leg, forcing him to land. Deku asks All Might if he can still become a hero even if he is quirkless, but before he can answer the question. All Might deflates into his skinny form and reveals his injury to Deku and tells him that it is too dangerous for a quirkless person to become a hero, so no it is not possible. Suddenly there is an explosion in the distance, with All Might realizing he dropped the bottle so runs over to check if anyone is hurt, to find the sludge villain suffocating another child. But cannot help him as he is out of time. Eventually Deku arrives at the scene and when realizing the sludge villain has Bakugo, rushes in to save him, throwing his bag into his eye, letting Bakugo breath. Before the sludge villain can attack Deku, All Might appears again, blowing the villain away with one punch. Later All Might approaches Deku and reveals one for all and how he wants Deku to be his successor, which Deku accepts. When training at the beach, All Might finds out that Deku is already at a strength, where he can handle 8% one for all due to training with Goku his whole life, but decides to train his body more. For 9 months, giving him 1 month to gain control of one for all. After the 10 month training, Deku can handle 10% one for all, and goes to the entrance exam with Goku, but sadly they are in different battlefields so can't help each other. There is no point covering the exam, for Goku, as he would be demolishing robots and even destroying the Zero Pointer to save a trapped contestant. At Deku's side, he would destroy many robots as well but still ends up destroying his body to save Eureka, not having enough strength to destroy the robot at 10% one for all. A week later, both Deku and Goku get their results with Deku getting 76 hero points and 60 rescue points. And Goku getting the highest with 167 hero points and 60 risway points. At the first day of school, when arriving they are greeted by Tenya and Bakugo arguing about a desk. When they are noticed, Tenya introduces himself and apologizes to Deku for being rude at the entrain exam. When Akako arrives she talks to Deku complimenting his strength, mimicking his punch to the zero-point robot. Suddenly, they are interrupted by a tired Azawa who complains about how long it took for them to be quiet, then asking them to get in their UA, PE outfit and to meet them at front. With Yuriruka complaining about missing orientation. When outside, Azawa reveal that he will be doing a quirk apprehension test, throwing Goku a ball as he scored the highest in the entrance exam. When Goku throws the ball, it goes 3 kilometers shocking the class especially Bakugo. Azawa tells the class that there will be 9 other tests like this with Minor commenting about how fun this will be, with Azawa revealing that whoever comes last will be expelled. In the first test, the race Bakugo is shocked to have lost to Deku who he thought was quirkless so charges at Deku in anger but is stopped by Razor Head Scarf and Quirk. Telling Bakugo to stop or he will be expelled, so Bakugo angrily complies deciding to find out how Deku got a quirk later. The test ends with Goku in first place, Deku in third, using 10% one for all in all the tests, placing just Bello Momo who used Machins to beat him. And Higakure in last because Goku replaced Minta in the class. Eraserhead then reveals that no one's getting expelled and that it was just a logical deception so everyone will try their best in the tests. The next day, 
the class waits for their teacher for hero basic training, when suddenly All Might enters the room, exciting the class. All Might the gives the students their costumes, and wait for them to meet outside. In this what if Deku will have his suit beta as I hate the original costume while Goku has his usual GI. It would probably be more interesting if I have Deku vs Goku for the training. However I will be having Goku replace Minta for this video meaning Goku will be on a team with Momo so won't need to do anything as Momo uses her quirk to block the door with thick metal making it. Impossible for Denki and Gyro to reach the bomb, and even if they get in the room, Goku can easily beat them as Gyro's quirk is not very combative. And Denki's quirk will only stun Goku as that's all Master Roche's Thunder Shock Surprise did which is definitely more concentrated and at a higher voltage than Denki's quirk. So is an easy win for Goku and Momo. Deku and Bakugo's fight is very close as Bakugo trained more as he wanted to keep up with Goku so is stronger than Conan. However I see the match going to Goku due to his advanced fighting techniques from martial arts lessons with Goku. This enrages Bakugo nearly making him leave UA but Goku and Deku persuade him to stay with Deku accidentally revealing that his quirk was given to him. The next day Azawa reveals that they will be going to the USJ for disaster training. On the bus Azawa compares Deku and Goku's quirks to All Might's, with Deku starting to mumble but Goku says that their quirks are similar but All Might is just too strong. Stating that one day he will be stronger and become the number one hero. The class then go on to talk about who the strongest in the class is with the majority saying it is Goku while others think it is either Deku, Shoto or Bakugo. At the USJ, Rescue Hero 13, welcomes the students to the USJ and gives a speech about the dangers of quirks and how they need to control their quirks to save lives. Suddenly, a black cloudy warp gate opens with a hundred villains coming out of it including a man with hands on his face and a big black figure who has a bird beak and his brain sticking out. The students go to take a closer look at the fake villains but Azawa stops them telling them they are real and to evacuate, then jumping down to fight the villains. Goku also jumps down to Azawa's surprise, telling his teacher that he will take any punishment later, but he needs to stop these villains now and fast because you aren't good at drawn out fights. Goku and Azawa take out the majority of minor villains, while Kurajiri rewarps all the students around the USJ. Meanwhile Deku easily beats his villains. Also coming towards the central plaza to help Goku and Azawa. Shigaraki gets annoyed by Goku and orders no Mew to attack Goku which catches him of guard, just barely dodging, receiving a minor cut on his arm. Seeing this, Goku uses all his strength to fight the no Mew but the no Mew is just too strong so ends up being punched to the floor. After thinking he had beaten Goku, the no Mew returns to finish of Azawa but Goku fires a key blast, while imagining Bakugo shooting an explosion. The key blast burns the Nomus arm doing some damage, but not enough to the Nomu, who continues to attack Azawa despite having his quirk erased. Seeing this, Goku thinks that Isawa was killed and that he was too weak and starts to rage out shaking the USJ with his anger. First his hair sticks up, then his eyes turn yellow, and his muscles buff up increasing his power tenfold. If you haven't caught on, Goku has gone a cry and is about to demolish the Nomu. Because Goku is in so much rage, he can barely control himself and doesn't hold back throwing punch after punch, each doing more damage than the Nomus quirk can absorb blowing holes through the Nomu. But because Goku is not thinking correctly, he is not concentrating his punches like All Might so he keeps on regenerating, just to be punched again. Eventually Goku gets bored with the fight and shoots a key blast through the Nomus chest nearly killing it. And sending it flying out of the USJ Goku then falls down to his base unconscious due to using too much energy and key in the fight. Seeing this Shigaraki takes the opportunity to try to decay Goku but suddenly, All Might appears and protects his students, forcing the League of Villains to escape. By the time the other teachers and the police arrive, Goku finally wakes up, not remembering what he just did, instead asking Zukoki where Azawa is and if he is alive. Zukoki assures class 1am that thanks to their bravery all the teachers will survive however Azawa is in a bad condition with a broken arm and damage to his eyes and head. But is expected to recover. Two weeks later, the UA Sports Festival begins with Goku easily winning the obstacle race, Deku coming second, Bakugo coming third and Shoto coming fourth. For the cavalry battle, Goku joins teams with Deku, Arkako, and Mai Hatsume, replacing Tokayami. In the cavalry battle, Team Goku does not lose their 10 million point band because Goku can move just as fast as Ida's recipro burst so can easily counter. For the one-on-one -on -one fights, Goku will replace Tokayami, fighting Momo in the first round, fighting her on easy mode while warming up, then sending her out the ring with immense speed. 
then fighting Mina in his second match, allowing her to show of her acrobatics and techniques but then swiftly knocking her out of the ring with the wind pressure of a punch while she was off balance. For his third match, Goku will fight Bakugo. The start of the battle will be close, with Goku only fighting at 50% of his power, countering and dodging many explosions, annoying Bakugo. Bakugo tries all the techniques he has such as his howitzer impact which forces Goku to use 75% of his power and a key blast to shoot himself back into the ring and Bakugo's amour piercing shot auto. Cannon, which he designed specifically to beat Goku, but only pushes Goku back and rips his costume, leaving minor burns and some shallow cuts. Bakugo would then get a flashback to junior high, when he squeezed Goku's tail asking what it is, making Goku collapse to the ground out of energy, like a cat when you grab their neck. Remembering this, Bakugo grins but is angered he needs to resort to cheap tricks, and uses his explosions to propel himself behind Goku, grabbing Goku's tail. Instantly draining the energy of Goku until he falls to the ground. But before Midnight can call the match a win to Bakugo, Goku gets back up and kicks Bakugo in the chest sending him on a trajectory out of the ring. But Bakugo catches himself just a second before being knocked out. Bakugo yells at Goku confused on how he got up with Goku explaining how if he wants to become a hero. He can't have any easily exploitable weaknesses so he trained his tail with Deku for the last two weeks and can now handle his tail being grabbed. Goku then tells Bakugo that the battle is over, using a key blast which engulfs Bakugo's explosions. And send him crashing into the mud then bowing and getting off stage to help Bakugo up but he rejects it telling Deku not to look down on him, then storming away. Back at Deku's fight against Todoroki. The fight will be closer and Deku won't have the irreparable damage to his hand, but will still lose to Todoroki's flash freeze heat wave. Breaking both his legs and an arm in the attack. In the finals, Goku fights Todoroki and congratulates him on using his fire side. But tells Todoroki that it is useless against him as he can easily part the fire using Ki like he did in the filler episode in Dragon Ball when he met Master Roshi's master in the past while training. With Popo, which he demonstrates on the flames on each corner of the arena, but tells him it takes a lot of concentration. Todoroki tells Goku that that's fine, as he won't be using his fire for personal reasons so will only fight with his ice side. Goku accepts this but tells him that the battle would have been way cooler if he did. Long story short, Goku wins by easily flicking away the ice walls, even breaking through the heaven-piercing ice wall like it was nothing. Eventually Shoto gets too cold to continue and Goku knocks him out of the ring, claiming first place in the UA Sports Festival. Bakugo does not need to be restrained but did have to be dragged to the podium, because he did not want to accept a third place prize. Okay guy this is where I am going to be leaving this video off, next time I will do the internships and final exam mark thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you next time, bye.